War of the Roses is starting right now on KDWB. She already knows he's cheating. Now, that's one of the things oh, that's okay. interesting about yeah. War of the Roses. Uh, this week on War of the Roses, I'm talking to Gianna, and Gianna says, you already know he's cheating. You want to find out how long, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so Thomas and I have been dating for about a year, um, and we don't live together. I'm just always at his house. Um, you know, we're really close, and the other day... I got up to go to the bathroom and I walked behind the couch. He was sitting on the couch. It, it like divides the kitchen and the living room. So it's not up against the wall. Okay, got it. And so I was standing behind him and he, he didn't know I was there. And he was texting someone. And, you know, I was curious. I'm human. And I looked over his shoulder to see who it was. And he was texting. He was like texting some woman about like sex and getting together and they can't stop thinking about each other and it went on for like 15 minutes and I um I actually I know this is kind of bad but I pulled out my phone and I videotaped some of it because I just wanted to have proof I could not believe what was happening okay now so so for one minute there you are sitting on the couch you get up, go to yeah. the bathroom, you come back, and he's texting. So you're walking behind the couch, and you, like, did what, I don't know, that anybody would do it. But you're curious. And how, you stood back there for 15 minutes watching but him. But how did he not feel you behind me? I can feel someone if they're glancing in my direction. I'm like, who, who's, who's looking at me? I don't know. I think the adrenaline was pumping so much that I was so still. Yeah. I, I was frozen. I couldn't believe what was going on. So what kind of things? So he's like, oh, like, I care. What what kind of stuff? Because if you got it on video, how many yeah, times have you watched? Have you watched it over and over? Or did you just, um, what, what happened? Yeah, I've gone, I've gone back. I've scrolled through slowly. I mean, I'm I'm kind of ashamed, but like... Who wouldn't do the same thing? Like, I, I've just been scrolling through slowly to try and, like, read everything. Like, what kind of things does he say? Because, I mean, you get to a point you don't need to read anymore. You already know yeah. he's cheating. But what kind of stuff was he saying to, to this girl? Well, the first thing I saw was that he said, you were the first thing I thought about when I woke up this morning to uh, her. Uh, which is, that's pretty much like every girlfriend's nightmare to hear their boyfriend say that to someone else. Yeah. And, oh, no uh, kidding. <laughs> And she said, oh, my God, me too. I thought of you the moment I opened my eyes. And then at one point she goes, I'm so happy that I can share secrets with you that I've never told anyone else. I'm so happy that I can tell you things I've never told anyone else. And he's like, me too. And then she goes, like, I've never told anyone that it's been my dream to be with two men at the same time. Okay. Well, that's, <laughs> now all of you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he's like, oh, my God, I trust you so much. Me, too. And it, it just went on and on. Okay, so I think your point is, and it's Gianna, by the way, mm-hmm. that your boyfriend, Thomas, you don't need any other evidence. It's like, I mean, you already got the evidence. You, yes, you, I... you want to know how long, whether it's been going on the entire year that you've been together or whether it's fairly new. Yeah. Okay. That's all I want to know. I just want to know how long it's been going on. We're done no matter what, but it would help for my peace of mind, I think. It's kind of gross either way. I mean, it's especially yeah. gross if he's been doing it the entire time. I don't know how you waited to do this on the radio. Like, I would have, I don't think I could have even, I think I would have, like, reached over and snatched his phone out of his hand and I would have created a scene, I feel like. Reenact the scene. How would the scene have sounded? Let's say I'm there and I'm like, oh, I okay, think now about you. Snatch the phone. From you got your the phone hand. in my hand. Your phone is. Oh, oh, did you want this? Sorry to interrupt a give conversation me, me you were phone. having yeah. with X Y Z. No, you give listen me. to me. Give this me. is embarrassing. I am okay. in your house. I, you couldn't even wait till I left the I, house. I, wow, understandable. How long's been going on? I Who just, is she? Where'd you guys meet? I, What's happening? You just okay. And see, you would scream that though. I'm gonna have a feeling you would scream it. Would you scream it? I'm not a big screamer. Not a screamer. Okay. Um, I don't mean to make light of your situation because it does suck. But, Gianna, here's what we can do. We can call him. We can do the roses thing where we say, hey, take this survey. We'll send you roses. We know he's going to send them. You know, it doesn't matter. Even if he sends them to you, it's not going to change anything. Do you know her name? I think her name was Jessica. Okay. Unless he was using a fake name, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we can call and say, but you got to figure out a way to like, oh, how long you've been seeing her or, oh. I'll just ask that. I okay. think, you know, just straight, straightforward, baby. All right. We'll do that coming up in a second. We'll also talk to Jonathan Fogel from Fogel Family Law. 
to get his take on things. You know what? Who knows? Maybe it's a violation of privacy laws that you were leaning over the couch and videoing. Maybe you broke the law and maybe I <laughs> who knows what could happen. Jonathan Fogel will talk about War of the Roses coming up on part two. <laughs> Are they cheating? Let's find out. Part two of War of the Roses starts right now. On KDWB. Well, we pretty well established that he is cheating because if you didn't hear part one, she got up to go to the bathroom the other day, and apparently their couch doesn't back up to the wall. It backs up to the kitchen. So she walks, I'm picturing this, she gets up, walks around the back of the couch, looks down at his phone, and he's there. Oh, I think she goes to the bathroom first. Mm -hmm. He doesn't hear her come out. She walks back, and he's furiously texting. And she stands there and watches, and he doesn't even know she's watching. So she gets out her phone and videos so the smooth. dialogue. And I don't remember all of it, but it was, and she doesn't either. But it was something like, oh, I woke up thinking about you. I woke up thinking about you too. Oh, I'm so glad that we can share every secret with each other. Like I have this secret that I've only told you. And oh, you've had this and I can't wait to see you. And I love your touch and blah, blah, blah. So she doesn't have any doubt. It's not a matter of let's call him and see if he really is cheating. Right. She wants to know. How long this has been going on? Whether they've been together for a year, I think so. Yeah, has been going on the entire time, which is disgusting. Oh man, that would it's be awful. No less disgusting, but different degrees of disgusting. If it's been going on for a month, so we're gonna call him, and we're gonna give him the roses, and then kind of fish for how long he's been with this other woman if he picks her. Yeah, because remember, know. you guys, he might pick the the woman who called in originally. Then we're going to talk to Jonathan Fogel from Fogel Family Law, who everybody loves, and uh, get his opinion on the whole thing for War of the Roses. Let's make the phone call right now. Hi. Thomas, I will send out the dozen long stem romantic roses, as I promised in the beginning of this call. We're going to send those to whomever you would like here in the U.S. Um, I'll get their name from you, and then I'll grab the address after that. So what is the name of the recipient? Okay, yeah. Um, they're going to go to Jessica. Okay. And would you like to include a card? You can just put like a note on the flowers like most flowers have. I mean, we just say thinking of you since I woke up today. I don't know. How short should it be? No, should I think like... that's, that's perfect. Short, sweet is good. And that is okay. so sweet, by the way. How long, have, as I'm getting this information together, how long have you and Jessica been together? I'm assuming she's your girlfriend. I, yeah, I mean, she's, she's really important to me. Like, she's, um, she, uh, I think a couple months. Okay, yeah, we, so... we met at, yeah, we, yeah, we met at St. Patrick's Day party. And, uh, yeah, we've been... Uh, Fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for three or four months, you have been uh, seeing Jessica and Gianna at the same time. It sounds like. Excuse me? Yeah, I got some bad news for you, uh, Thomas. Yeah, I, we know more about you than you think, which is really creepy and That's weird. Really creepy say, yeah. And Hold you, on. Well, yeah, you don't even know who we are, but um, uh, but let's just pretend that doesn't matter right now. But I will say that your other girlfriend, Gianna, has oh. listened. She is listening. Yeah, do we know oh. about Gianna? Gianna is listening right now. She's the one who put us up to calling you. Oh my god! To see um, Gianna, what do you think now that you know that it's been since St. Patrick's Day that he's been seeing Jessica? Yeah. Uh, hi, Thomas. I've got yeah. everything. No, this is over, um, but, baby. This is not. No, look, look, look. This is not. It's yeah, not what it's. I, I don't. Isn't it? I really don't care. Whatever you have to say, I mean, we're done. I was at that St. Patrick's Day party. For the record. Oh, well, uh, you were at the party. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Do you know who Jessica is? I don't know. I've never met her. Okay. But she was at the party, so somehow at yeah. the party. Okay, wow. yeah. Mm. Look, look, can I, can I, is there, I mean. No, you, no, no, no. Could, Jana? Nope. Jana. I saw you text her. I've got a video of it. How you share what? secrets together. No, I'm I, good. I, We're done. I have everything I need to know. Thank you. you. You take a video of, like, a, what, like, you took video of this? Yes, I saw it. Okay, I saw the whole thing. I saw you texting her for like twenty minutes. Okay. Twenty? Oh, no, come on. This is, <laughs> honey. Can we? Can we? Uh, can we just? We get her on like, the call. Let's, let's get talk her off the, the radio. Can we just? Did you get can the we just talk off the radio. Stop blubbering. I know everything. Okay. Stop. I, I... So it's a matter of what she decides to do with the information. It sounds like, like she's, she's done. done. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you though. People say 
follow up on that War of the Roses. Call them and find out. Remember that couple that did this and the guy that said he was abducted by aliens and, <laughs> and she believed him? And to follow up, well, here's the problem. We call them back a couple of weeks later. They don't answer the phone. Mm -hmm. Either that or they don't want to go on the radio. Right. Or sometimes they go, you know what, I just, no, I don't want, because I think a lot of the time they get back together. Oh, yeah. Or they don't want to rehash and relive it. They're like done and moving forward. Yeah. Jonathan Fogel, family attorney. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. How are you guys? Doing Happy okay. Fourth of July. Short week. Love the short so good, week. yeah. Um, and basically on War of the Roses, it's something you've run into before where they know their partner's cheating. But it doesn't matter in Minnesota. That doesn't mean you get less spousal maintenance, less furniture. You don't. It, it doesn't really mean anything legally, right? Yeah, right. I mean, I, so Minnesota is a no-fault state, like most states in the U.S., which means that if someone's cheating, it doesn't have an impact on the division of assets or whether you're going to get part of their retirement or the you know the dishes. It really has no impact, and it really doesn't have any impact on custody however there are times where the fact that someone is having an affair could impact custody or parenting time there was uh, there was a case i had where someone brought in a video that they had already hired a private investigator and they brought in a video of the mom this was the dad that i was representing the mom was uh going into a motel leaving the infant in the car seat going into a motel with the person that she was having an affair with. Now, in that situation, clearly the negligent parenting mm -hmm. was the relevant part, not necessarily whether she was having the affair, but the, the parenting was the problem. Yeah, that's bad parenting decision when you decide to leave your kid in the car seat, in the car, even if it's on a cooler day. That's just bad. I have no comment that, on that. That's someone who shouldn't ha be allowed to have children, period. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a bad situation, and the court definitely did the right thing in that case. And so those are times where it's relevant, right? But the affair itself wasn't the relevant thing. Now, it's also one of the things when, when someone comes to me and they say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to see somebody. Is that okay, right? They're going through a divorce. And my question is always, well, is the person a convicted sex offender? Because that's the problem, right? You don't want to be seeing somebody who's going to be a danger to your children because then that yeah. does come into play, right? Can I ask you this, Jonathan? Because it's interesting, and we all know this one, that it's like a no-fault state, and most states are. But was it the thing back in the 30s, like um, uh, somebody could divorce their partner after finding out they were cheating, and then there would be a fault, and they'd be able to say, I'm not going to pay him or pay her anything because they were cheating. Was that a thing back in the 50s or 40s or whenever? Oh, uh oh. Uh, there we go. Not quite that old. But <laughs> I thought maybe you learned that in law school history. <laughs> no, something. but yes. No, that's exactly why they changed it, right? They changed it because you'd have to prove fault in order to be allowed to get divorced. So people would, you know, hire investigators and prove that someone was at fault and they would not get if someone got divorced and they had had an affair the courts could say well sorry you're not can you imagine that day you see like an old black and white movie just like bye i'm gonna get a divorce and they like i'm not gonna give you a divorce yeah. well now you just walk in give them papers and you're like see ya i mean there's more to it than that and jonathan fogel will walk you through the rest of it but now you can walk in for anything it's like i don't like the way you do your hair I'm done, right? <laughs> yes, and I, you know that there's there's probably people that get divorced for those reasons. I would say it takes two people to get married, but really one only to decide to get the divorce. Right? It's going to happen regardless. The other person can make it more difficult, drag it out, make things really ugly. But the divorce is going to happen whether you want it to or not. Hey, we're talking to Jonathan Fogel from Fogel Family Law. If you need help with divorce, custody, payments, uh, anything, visitation, tell me about catching someone cheating let's say that somebody listening is like i think somebody is cheating on me i'm going to set up a video camera in the clock that i found on insta that i found on amazon is that legal or you're not allowed to do that so let me preface this by saying i'm not a criminal attorney so i, I can't speak to everything but what i do know right not only that i learned this in law school but also after is that if someone has a reasonable expectation of privacy somewhere, it is illegal to videotape in those areas. So, for example, I can set up a nanny cam in my house, 
right? If I have a nanny coming over or whoever, I can set that up. But it can't be somewhere where there's an expectation of privacy, like a bedroom or a bathroom. Okay, got right? it. So you can set those up, but what you can't do is set it up in someone else's home. Like, I couldn't go into your house and set up a camera, right? Because you have that expectation in your mm -hmm. house for me not to go in there and set that up. Okay. But so if you're in a public place, it's pretty much, you know, free reign, unless you're infringing on someone else's reasonable expectation of privacy where they are. Right, so like shooting through someone's windows, those kind of things. Where you can expect privacy. Jonathan, it's always right. a joy, a joy to talk <laughs> to you. We love your energy. Jonathan is uh, not only a good uh, lawyer, but he's a good human, and he's kind of fun to hang out with. So, yeah. Um, well, just, kind, just kind of fun. Thank kind of fun. Well, I don't want to oversell it. Yeah, exactly. You, you said Jonathan was fun. You liar. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Find him online, FogelFamilyLaw.com, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you, guys. Have a great week.